Ready to go, uh, live and in living color. There he is, Dave Ray, Dave is yes, Communication is. Director of FAIR. Good morning, Dave. How are you, sir? It's good to have you. Hey, how you doing, Paul? Good to be with you, I'm buddy. doing good. You are live and in living color in, in, in D.C., or where are you calling from? I am uh, right in the nation's capital, actually broadcasting from my home today, uh, yeah. as many of us are still working from home. And so you're uh, uh, not seeing me in my office, but rather my kitchen. And hopefully that's well, uh, that works for you. Hey, we're in Mississippi. We're more comfortable in the kitchen than the office, so you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we we have no problem with My mom's from Kentucky, so I feel the same way. Ah. Listen, two of the great memorable remotes we ever did is when we were invited to, uh, to do the fair, uh, not too far from the Capitol up there. We went a couple of times, yeah. and it was most enjoyable uh, to do that, and informative, too. Got a chance to meet some great right. people. All right, let's talk about this. Um, at some point, I think most of the Trump base and most conservative and most people who call themselves patriotic, even if they're still clinging to the Democratic ideology, understand we have a problem on the border. But it looks like we're going to have yeah. to have more people who, who are dyed in the wool liberals to shake this party into reality here because it has fallen apart on the border. Well, I mean, you know, let's just start off by saying, I mean, I, I agree with kind of what Senator Kennedy said. It sounds like the person in charge is day drinking on the job, except yeah. the sad fact is that this seems to be happening by design. I mean, uh, President Biden put Kamala Harris as the, you know, in charge of the immigration as the immigration czar. She has publicly stated that she does not support deporting illegal immigrants. So why would you put that's you know that's like putting an arsonist in charge of the fire department. I mean, why would you do that? Uh, but it's all working perfectly well. I mean, if you look at uh, we had better border security under President Trump than this country has seen in a hundred years. For an example, April uh, of of 2020, when President Trump, right after he instituted the, the final of his border crackdown. Uh, measures, we had 17,000 apprehensions on the U.S.-Mexico border. To put yeah. that into perspective, this past May, 180,000. This past June, 189,000. We are expecting over 200,000 for the month of July. It is So, so to sum up the Biden-Harris border strategy in one word, it would be chaos. It's chaos on the border. It's threatening national security, but first and foremost, it is absolutely threatening public health. These folks are coming across sick, more than 6,000 a day. Most of them are not being tested for COVID. They're being shipped off in the quiet of the night all over the country. Uh, there's pretty good uh, uh, suspicion, pretty heavy suspicion that, that a lot of these folks who are ending up in Florida could be behind what is causing the spike there. And uh, this is all in the middle of a, you know, national security health crisis. People should be turned back immediately when crossing the border if for no other reason. Well, two reasons. One, you're coming in illegally, and that's not the way to enter the country. But number two, you pose a serious public health risk. And it's the risk, you know, the U.S. immigration policy, the, the biggest concern, first and foremost, should be the health and security of the American people. And both of those Dave, issues have been tossed out the window. Here, here's what I don't understand, being that we've both been involved in politics for a long time. Th this doesn't make sense. Right. Because you said, you, you, you basically said what most people understand. There's a reason behind this. They, they, they are doing right. this intentionally. And the number one reason is to turn those people into votes later on right you got to have the, you you've got to make them dependent so that they will be longtime voters and they will they will vote monogamously like or uh, monolithically like uh, the African Americans have done for all these years but traditionally the Hispanic uh, and also some of the other people coming across have not done that so they're they're 
is it to a point where they don't have any other, anything else to do? They, they can't. We got redistricting that's going against them. We've got uh, some of their sm- small groups uh, of uh, of nonprofit organizations, and uh, and uh, some of these they're not holding together. So right. is it the last ditch thing that the Democrats have? Well, I mean, there's there. This seems to be serving two political purposes. One is that at least first-generation immigrants, so I'm talking about people who immigrate here and then become U.S. citizens, mm-hmm. um, they, te- they, they register to vote Democrat 60 to 65% of the time. Uh, and, and the rest aren't Republicans. Many of them are independents. Now, that might change over time, but so on the, on the one it. hand, when you're losing hordes of Americans because of your policies— you know, your embracing of socialism and other policies that, that turn off the public, racializing everything, uh, you have to import new voters, and that's what they're doing. But the other thing is to appease their, uh, the left wing of the Democratic Party, which is where, you know, most, most of the momentum of the party exists. And so they're, it's kind of serving two purposes. Uh, to make things even worse, the president is promising an amnesty. And upward to upwards of 11 million illegal aliens who are currently in the country. Nothing causes a stampede at the border, much like talking about an amnesty. And what is really obnoxious about this, besides the fact that you shouldn't award, reward people for breaking our nation's immigration laws, is the fact that they're trying to do this amnesty uh, here in Washington, this is the smoke and mirrors part, in something called the budget reconciliation project process. So they're going to pass the uh, infrastructure spending bill, and then they're going to, while they're reconciling the, 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 the different bills, they're, trying, they're going to try to classify illegal aliens as critical infrastructure and therefore, if they can do that, then they only need 51 votes to pass one of one of the most controversial aspects of yeah. immigration policy, which is rewarding U.S. citizenship or a pathway to citizenship to people who violated our immigration laws. And they can do that without even 60 votes in the Senate through the reconciliation process by considering illegal aliens as infrastructure. Go figure so that they're- one. They're playing the numbers, basically playing the numbers, get as many yeah. people here as possible. How does Title 42 fit into this, and where, what's the status of that? So Title 42 was a public health measure that was enacted by President Trump in March of 2020 that mm-hmm. said because of a national health crisis, the United States, like just about every other country, is closing its borders, and you can't come here. Uh, until we get this crisis under control. I mean, it's you control the movement of people the way we're doing here in the United States. You know, New York City now is requiring that you show vaccination passports to get into places. But so they 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 close the border, um, and, and apprehensions just plunged. What's happening now, however, is that uh, they're only applying Title 42 to uh, single adults. So about 40% of the people who are apprehended are still being brought into the United States, whether or not they're being tested for COVID. I mean, the ones who do test positive for COVID, we're being told are put in hotels and then they just disappear. So it's kind of irrelevant. It should apply to everyone and everyone who comes across illegally should be returned. We have a a quick time out here, but I want to play something coming back in and have you respond to that if you don't mind. Can you hang on for a second? Dave Ray with FAIR sure. will do that coming back in. Man, you hear something like that from a uh, former agent who couldn't take anything. And we hear it all the time. Uh, Dave Ray is with the Communication Director for FAIR, which stands for what, uh, Dave? I, to make sure you get it right. I get FAIR it right. is a Federation for American Immigration Reform. or the nation's That's premier it. immigration watchdog group. We're located, as you know, Paul, right on Capitol Hill right up mm-hmm. to our knees in swamp water uh, and fighting the good fight for the American people. We have three million members uh, and supporters across the country. Let's talk, but you, you heard that and you hear what's yeah. going on in McAllen, Texas. I, I'm looking right. at some of the, 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 the film right now on Fox News. The White House press secretary blames Trump administration for the border surge. And if there's anybody yeah. out there in this country that believes that, 
They are. They they need help. They really need help. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, they could have gotten away with that for the first few weeks. But, you know, now we're eight months into the Biden administration and things are getting progressively worse. And uh, this was caused by taking a wrecking ball to every facet of the Trump border security program that was in place. These included agreements with Mexico to shore up support on its southern border where all these people mm-hmm. are coming through, but it also included uh, deals with our Central American neighbors to cut down on asylum fraud uh, and insist that people, if they're, if they're at, gonna ask for asylum, that they ask for it in the first safe country they enter. In other words, if you're fleeing from Guatemala and you, in, you have to go through Mexico to get to the United States, the onus is on you to ask for asylum in yeah. Mexico. And then there was the remain in Mexico policy that ended catch and release, the building of the border wall. I mean, none of these things in and of themselves stopped illegal immigration or greatly reduced it, but working together in a portfolio approach, apprehensions were at a historic low. And on day one, Joe Biden not only began you know, systematically dismantling this with his DHS secretary, Alejandro Mayorkas, Mm -hmm. but he incentivized it. He said, if you send your kids here, they're going to stay. All of a sudden, according to, you know, government officials in Guatemala, coyotes, alien smugglers were out recruiting kids to take them to the United States. He, Biden has promised free health care to illegal aliens. Now they're putting illegal aliens in public housing. I mean, we've incentivized something that we're supposed to, to uh, be discouraging. Then on top of all of that, as was mentioned in the Tucker Carlson piece, imagine mm-hmm. if all the state troopers and sheriffs in Mississippi were told from here on out, you are gonna turn a blind eye to all criminality. What that would do to their morale. That's basically what's happened to the border patrol. We know like 40% of them have been taken off the border so they can act as babysitters for all the unaccompanied minors who are coming over. And and ICE can't, only about 5% of the illegal aliens in the whole country are are considered deportable now by ICE. You can't be deported just for being here illegally. You have to do something heinous and get deported for that. Dave, I will say this. There's so many different elements to this besides just how these uh, local communities are going to take up the slack when they're having problems already as far as housing, education, right. feeding, all of these different things right. along with the, the criminal aspect of this that happens. Then you've got COVID, and then we're not even talking about the drugs that are coming across the border. Right. So if, uh, if, if the uh, Democrats are thinking about maybe the midterms, And they would love to turn Texas blue. This doesn't seem to be a good way to do it. Well, you know, they are the problem with allowing any level of illegal immigration. It's the same reason why you lock your back door when you go to bed at night. It's not because you think all your neighbors are crooks, but you want to have some control over who's coming into your house. The same applies for the country. And we know nothing about these people. They've not had a criminal background check. They're coughing. They could all very well have COVID. We don't know that. And then they're being, you know, in, in the dark of night spread throughout the United States in an attempt to keep from the American people just how bad the situation is. I mean, there's been a complete crackdown on media coverage. They don't it let is. cameras yeah. anywhere near these detention facilities. These well, unaccompanied minors are being crammed in like tuna fish into the, you know, the, these shelters where it's just like, you know, super spreader events Mm -hmm. in and of themselves the um they didn't have to control it on most of the mainstream media they did it willingly as as we well know explain a little bit why the the administration paid billions of dollars not to build the wall a lot of people cannot comprehend that you know i I would have to attribute it to something called uh, trump derangement syndrome and it was anything that President Trump did or had anything to do with was not only deemed a bad idea, it was deemed evil. And I was at the border wall just a month ago, and I talked to a lot of Border Patrol agents off the record because they know if they were caught talking to us, they would be fired. The border wall is incredibly effective. 
And uh, so the Biden administration, they were on contract to keep building this border wall, and they decided they would rather just let the contractors keep the money and sit idle Amazing. as opposed to building any more of the border wall at all. Uh, we hope they change their mind on that. We hope that they change their mind on the remain in Mexico policy. But yeah. the left wing of the Democratic Party uh, seems to be having the most influence over this president. And that spells bad news for immigration enforcement, unfortunately. Something just as ridiculous as having that gap, that, that final little piece yeah. where they we're all coming through. And then the Democrats' solution to this, let's have a study committee and, and um, fund yeah. that study committee on, on uh, how, to, how to get that gate back up there. It's just, it was just asinine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, so the border, the border wall isn't impenetrable. You can take an acetylene torch and cut your way through it. But that's mm -hmm. why you have Border Patrol agents and monitoring system so that if that happens, it's addressed immediately. You take 40% of the border patrol agents off the wall and off the what they call the line, which is there on the border. And then if you do cut through the border wall, you've created you know, your own little road right into the United States. If you wanna know how people along the border feel about this, I mean, President Trump had the strongest support amongst Hispanic Americans along the border than more than any Republican has ever seen. And uh, Congressman Henry Cuellar, a Democrat, has been one of the harshest critics of the Biden administration's chaotic policies on the border. And that's because his people in his district are taking this on the chin. Yeah. The federal government yeah. is refusing to enforce our immigration laws and then sticking, it, and sticking the tab to the states. And the state of Texas is getting hit hard with it. What's your ratings for Mr. Mayorkas? We've called for his resignation. We believe <laughs> that he has, has not only failed to uphold his constitutional duty uh, to protect this nation, but he's actually imperiled this nation through mm -hmm. his various actions. Uh, he is the guy who came up with DACA, which was an amnesty for uh, illegal aliens who arrived uh, as minors, but I mean, he has been the mastermind behind the complete destruction of this nation's ability to control its borders, and we think he should step down immediately. I think the this president has put some very, very dangerous people within uh, the positions of power in the cabinet. David, it's good talking to you, sir. Good seeing you. you Look too. forward to having you back on. You I appreciate too. it very, very much. Stay safe.